So we wanted to dive in to talk about some top tips uh, in general with social media before we uh, get into the specifics and the nitty gritty of Instagram and of Facebook. So one of the first things we found is that consistency across any platform that you're on is really important. Uh, not only because this is one of the ways that the uh, algorithms, which are those hidden things that do something behind the scenes, help you out. The more consistent you are, the more the algorithm likes that. But what happens is that your content will continually pop up for other people who are interested in your content, the more consistent you are. Um, so that can be a really important element of being on social media. Yeah, and then along with this consistency is the idea of cross-posting. And all that means cross-posting is when you post across different platforms the same content. Um, and I do this a lot. People ask me all the time, like, wow, you're on all these different apps. And I think my secret is I'm just constantly posting a lot of the same content across the different platforms. So if I make a, a picture on Instagram, it's going to go on Facebook. It's going to go on Pinterest. It's going to go on LinkedIn. And we're, we'll dive in more with the different platforms on where you'd want to specifically make certain content, uh, like pictures versus videos. But in general, then a lot of these can then be shared across the platforms to take some of that overwhelm down with consistency too. Because if you are interested in being on several social media platforms, that can be a daunting task to see like, oh no, I need to have five different things to be consistent about. But you can see where cross-posting can come in and you can share this with different people and really hone in on your target audience with the different cross-posting. Um, and, and find different ways to share it with your different audiences, because maybe some people are on Instagram, some people are on Facebook, and by sharing the same post, you're going to catch more of them. Yes, yeah, and the daunting piece, I think, that cross-posting really helps of having, knowing you have one piece of content, but you're putting it all in all those other different places. And then another thing that can be really helpful when things feel uh, daunting and you don't want to be like glued to your phone or your computer is scheduling that also helps, especially when you can schedule across platforms. Um, so there's apps, uh, Planoly is one of them, and there's a bunch of different apps that you can get. And then Facebook, I know, has um, scheduling that you can do if you post in different groups. So that is a really, really great, I think, aspect of uh, social media that's really helpful to still have a life balance where you're not stuck to your phone, but you also want to be consistent and post across platforms is finding some sort of scheduling, even if you're scheduling on your end and you're writing things out, but you know what you're going to post a week or two ahead of time can take off a lot of last minute of what do I post tomorrow or what do I post this day and um, and then those scheduling apps are really, really helpful as well um, to get organized and relieve some of the overwhelm of being consistent. Yeah, and that's actually what I do. I print out calendars or I'll use my agenda and I'll just, uh, or my planner, I should say. And I just yeah. um, and constantly, like, if I think of something, what else? So with the consistency aspect, if I have too many ideas in one day, instead of trying to post them all in one day, I'll be like, oh, I have multiple ideas. Let me post this on Tuesday. Let me post this on Wednesday. And I can write that out. Yeah. And, um, and that kind of goes with batching too, where you could sit down and make a bunch, schedule it. I love that you touched on too, like batching. Um, that is so, so helpful if you are doing social media, if you have a newsletter, whatever thing it is that you're reaching an audience or connecting. Um, batching is just like such a time saver. And I love how you, you mentioned, Bonnie, like when you get too many ideas and you're like, oh, all of these will be really great, but it's so much better to space them out and really kind of schedule. And then you're not freaking out the next week when you don't have any ideas because right. yeah, you've got that all in one place. I know some people have like um, content, you know, there's particular content planners you can buy and all this different stuff for um, content, but yeah, it can be, it can be really fun, but these kinds of things definitely help with planning ahead and not getting too overwhelmed. <laughs> right. And it helps yeah. keep your presence up with that consistency. Like, yeah, with the algorithms, but also you just want to keep yourself present online and posting mm -hmm. five things one day versus spreading that out throughout the week. You're going to yeah. be more present if you're spreading that out versus like, I only post once a week and I post like 10 posts. Like yeah. a lot of those posts are probably not going to be seen. Yes. 
absolutely, definitely. Awesome. So our next tip are hashtags, and this kind of goes along with accessibility too. I'll kind of tie that in. So first, hashtags are when you hit the pound sign on your keyboard and you put a little uh, tag of like a topic that relates to your post. Um, and what's important about hashtags is to make sure it's something people would search for is what you really want to, you want to be hitting on those keywords, um, even things that are like SEO based that people would search for in like a Google engine. Um, so, and then you could throw some cute ones in too if you're feeling fun, but like you want to <laughs> make sure like there's a function to it as well too. Um, and then as, as far as how many per post that, that can vary between platforms, but, um, having three at least is usually pretty good. And then, um, you can choose your max. Sometimes it just, I, I'll, I'll keep going if I keep thinking of things that are relatable and so searchable, but it's probably not too much more than 10 just cause then there's a lot of hashtags, but mm -hmm. luckily that's not what people are reading. It's for the search and you put it on the bottom. So you could put as many as you think are applicable to the post that you're making. And then the accessibility aspect of it is I have been using camel case hashtags. And what this is, is you capitalize the first word or that you capitalize each word in the hashtag. So if you're saying hashtag music therapy, music's capitalized and therapy's capitalized. And what this does is people who use screen readers, it's a lot easier for the screen reader to read the hashtag when you capitalize each word. Otherwise it can be, sometimes it can start, sound, they try to make it one word music that one's like together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it helps with that accessibility. And sometimes even for people who are reading, it could help um, pop out the words a little easier too. If you have like a longer hashtag and you want um, each word to be really clear which word you're using, that camel case can be really helpful with that aspect. Awesome. Yeah. I also uh, started using, there's an app, there's a bunch of different apps. I think you, you and I might use different ones so that we'll have a couple different recommendations, but Clipomatic um, to give captions on stories, which we'll get to too. But if you're doing a story and it's like your face and you're talking, um, having a, um, having closed captioning basically on your small videos like that is obviously a really important element of accessibility. And there's a ton of different apps to do that too. Um, Clipomatic is just one of the ones that I found that I use and it's really easy. You just go in, you record your video, you upload it to Instagram, but then you have these awesome captions. And I think it's gotten every word right. Every time I've used it, I think maybe one time I was like, oh, that word is wrong and I had to change it. So it's a really kind of great mini transcription service. That's awesome. I use AutoCap um, as awesome. for Androids because I don't have an Apple yeah. phone. Um, and it's, it's pretty good. I have to go in and edit it a little bit, but I think it also helps me speak clearer too because I'm trying to really make sure the <laughs> captions can pick up on what I'm saying. So yep. uh, then that, that helps make it more accessible for everybody if I'm not mumbling and you can read it. So <laughs> Very true. I didn't think about that. That's such a good point. <laughs> it does oh yeah, I'm demand. always like, okay. Yeah, gotta be nice and clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, the I think something that is really important, especially coming off of accessibility and really connecting with your audience. Um, Bonnie and I actually, I think we first connected over Instagram or some type of social media. And I think that's the biggest part of social media is it really is social and building relationships is such an important part of what you're doing online. Um, so connecting with other people, spending time on other people's platforms, if it's liking their stuff and commenting on it or sharing it, um, touch, reaching out and messaging people and just saying, hey, I really like your stuff. Thank you for what you're doing. And it's really helpful. And that I think is such an important part of social media and really makes it what it is. It's the enjoyable part of it. Um, but I think sometimes can be the part that's left behind is just, you know, if you're getting on and you're focusing on being consistent and cross posting, um, but really actually spending time uh, with other people's platforms. Yeah, and I would even argue that that relationship building is more important than being consistent. Yeah. Um, because I think I it could be get really easy to get like caught up and like, okay, I got to keep posting, keep posting, keep posting. But you know, if you don't post every day, but you are like commenting and you are interacting with people, that's going to make a bigger impact 
than people just seeing your posts all the time because that yeah it's, it's social media it's that kind of connecting with others and um so like if you see somebody who's posting things that you like commenting or or even engaging with your target audience if a client or a potential client comments something like oh i really like this post saying like thank you and like and, and not just being a screen that they're talking to because if you're just posting consistently but never interacting then um it could be hard for them to see like oh there's that there's a human behind this like social media <laughs> screen yes yeah i agree i think it's definitely it's the thing to remember at the front end like it is the most important part is is the relationship not just putting content out there because you're you know social media is just an avenue to build relationships in a different way um yeah i love that <laughs>